Hey folks, this is Wednesday after the uh, after the U.S. election, and Michael Emblem, whose guitar you will hear, suggested we do an updated version of Alice's Restaurant, which is a song written uh, about 55 years ago based on a true story of Arlo Guthrie getting uh, arrested for littering, and the tale that that leads and how all of it became... Uh, concept in which we can get together and sing about peace and love and those kinds of things. So, trying to do a modern one and here we go. We'll see what happens. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You know, you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant just walk on in round the back about a half a mile from the railroad track you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant so this story dates back to a time when Arlo went to see Alice at the restaurant in 1965 and she got to the restaurant there where in the church where the pews used to be and they decided it'd be a friendly thing to take the garbage out and so they did they put in the back of the red white vw microbus brought implements of destructions and things like that and went to the city dump and got there and found out dumps closed on thanksgiving well that caused a little panic and they came up with plan b and plan b was hey look there's some garbage down the bottom of that hill instead of bringing that one up why don't we drop ours down? And that's what they did. And off they went and had a thanks didn't given dinner that just couldn't be beat. Went to bed, got up the next morning when the phone rang. It was Officer Obi at the police officer station asking why his name was found in a pile of garbage and could he come down to the police officer station. So they all drove down there and expecting to have their wrists slapped. When they got there, Arlo was uh, detained, handcuffed thrown in the back of the police car and brought to the quote scene of the crime unquote where they had all kinds of high-tech technology there happening and all kinds of uh, police things lots of magnifying glass and tape to pick up the evidence but the key piece was the 27 8x10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us and and anyway we get back, or they get back, I don't know, to use I, we, who, especially in these days, it gets really complicated, I'll say they, they got back, and anyway, thrown back in the slammer, Alice, remember this song, but Alice, she came in, bailed them out, the next day they go to court, Officer Obi's there with his 8x10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows on the back of each one, explaining what each one was, views his evidence against us, and he began to cry when he saw the blind judge come in with the CNI dog, realizing the judge wasn't going to look at the evidence. The case was dismissed. Officer Obi cried because it was another case of American blind justice. Now, Arlo Guthrie and Officer Obi weren't really close, you see, but they became friends over the course of time, and Arlo attended Officer Obi's funeral and spoke, at the fu and spoke at the funeral, too, I believe. Now, if you're sitting listening to Arlo in, con in concert, then he says, but I didn't come to talk to you about the garbage. I came to talk about the draft. So then once you've gone and gotten your chiropractic adjustment with the head spin and the neck pain, he starts telling you that he was drafted. So he got good and drunk the night before and went to the draft place there in New York where he was hung up, rung down, and the guys in the uniforms over there were sending him to this place, that place, the other place, and all kinds of places, and they were inspecting, infecting, injecting, detecting, all kinds of horrible things, and he wasn't feeling very good about it. Now, long and short of this tale is, is that he ends up on the Group W bench, and if you don't know, the Group W bench is where you go as if you may not be moral enough to get sent overseas for Uncle Sam and join the army. So I'm, I'm sitting on the Group W bench over there, and a whole bunch of sociopaths 
amoral people probably can't go to Vietnam either or over there and they're mean, ugly, nasty looking sociopath and the meanest, ugliest, nastiest sociopath comes up, stands up and looks down at me and he says, kid, what you get? And I said, I didn't get nothing. Well, what were you arrested for? And I said, littering. And all the sociopaths, they just moved down to the end of the bench there. And then I said, well, I created a disturbance. They all came back. We shook hands, had a great time. I get called in to the shrink who wants to determine my ability to go and kill people. And I was so upset, I just did this. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. And I walked out. Now, one person does this making a kind of a statement. What that statement is, who's to know? Two people do it, think you're both kind of weirdos. But if we all do it, we start to sing a little verse of Alice's Restaurant Anti-Massacre Movement. Well, it may end war and stuff, but that's a lot to ask of the song. I'm looking, thinking, there's no peace movement anymore. And we have a country that's so divided down south that can't find peace between each other. So it's a lot to put on a song. But I think it's important that we do that and we don't feel too smug here over the 49th parallel. So we've got the same issues here. They're just deeper. And I think though one of the things that we have though that set us apart is we have a belief in our public institutions. We have a community, collective approach. We have the concept of, a, of this socialized medicine that they talk about, which is basically the human right, really. Anyway, not to get too political on a day of being political. How much time? Oh, we're running out of time here, people. We all have to take a part of this, and especially around... The, the, the racial awakening that's supposedly happening and that we really look and talk and try to change the systemic uh, injustice and racism that exists in our, in our, in our country and our province. And I think, there's, I think we can do something and we can make it. And, and I'm, uh, uh, but we got to do it and we got to work at it. It's not just going to happen. So here we go. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant, except in Alice. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Why don't you walk on in? It's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Except in Alice. Since the divorce, I'm not so sure anymore. Anyways, let's try to do something and learn and not be smug and love and peace and stay safe and stuff like that. Thank you for listening.